Is there any point in saving seed from a dahlia? Yes. I always do this. I mean, as, you know, this one seed head could probably give you 50 plants. They're probably about around about 40 to 50 seeds in there. And when they, to actually harvest the seed, you leave the seed pod on the dahlia until it's seared, which means it's papery and it's dry. And then you take it off and you rustle rustle it like that. The seeds will separate from the chaff that's in there. It's, it's like the um, sort of soft bedding in between the seeds, if you like. And um, then you dry the seed and keep them somewhere cool and dark for the winter, sow them in the spring. The thing is about dahlias and lots of other plants is they're quite, dare I say this, promiscuous. <laughs> Thanks to the pollinating insects. Um, and if a pollinating insect has been on another dahlia and then lands on this dahlia and mixes the pollen up, you're going to get a cross between two or three different dahlias. So you could get probably. anything. So you could get anything. But I have got three seedlings from this particular plant, um, which I could show you, which have got dark, glamorous dark foliage, but as yet they haven't flowered, so I'm waiting to see what colour the flowers will be. I'm waiting with bated breath. Of course, if they're the same... There's no point in doing it. And if they're awful, I mean, they could be an awful colour that you absolutely hate, there's no point in keeping it. Give them away. You give them away, <laughs> exactly. But well, somebody will always say yes. They always do. It's free, you know. <laughs> so here we have <coughs> three children of Magenta Star. I mean, Magenta Star is the mother, but I mean, who the father is, God knows. <laughs> but, but that's what makes it exciting, because you can see I've selected these three dahlias because they have dark foliage. Um, and so that, that's the trait taken from the mother. But what colour the flowers will be, I don't know. This one looks as if it might be going to be slightly magenta, but until it's fully open, you can't tell, because dahlias, they do slightly change as the, as the flowers open, and it could have a nice centre to it, or it could be something slightly different. These two, you can see, I mean, if you look carefully, you can see the difference in the foliage. This foliage on, th on this one is much more open. This is much more closed and bushy can you see the difference yeah they're all just slightly different yeah they all have different personalities well they are genetically different you see because every seed is genetically different from its sibling so that is, that means that you've got an original plant and if you don't have your own dahlia to collect seed from i mean i, I didn't i had a new garden this year and i bought some dahlia tubers in but i thought i'm going to experiment yeah and if you go to the garden center you can buy packets of mixed dahlia seeds similarly you don't know what you're going to get and i wanted mine to be orange and yellow and they're all red but they have got <laughs> lovely dark foliage in the border i've got lovely bright red flowers and it's pretty astonishing what you can get from a seed. I think anyone who walks past the garden, you'd never imagine that it all came in one, one no, growing season. Exactly, it is exciting. I've got one particular dahlia with foliage that's dark, not as dark as these, um, with single pink flowers with sort of stripes, white stripes on the petals. They look absolutely astonishing, but they're not for everybody because that particular one grows up to about six feet tall. Um, but these will not do that. They're, you can tell they're much dwarfer. But isn't it exciting? We don't know what we're going to get. They may be wonderful. I don't think there's an ugly one amongst them, but they may be just that little bit extra special. A bit like him, really. <laughs> Hello, I'm Alan Gray. Welcome to Get Get... <laughs> <laughs> So not only are you tidying your garden, you're getting more 